Hello? Uh, today I'll be doing a tutorial on how to throw knives uh, in the Nosman uh, no style using the Skampf method, which is a Russian style created by the late master Yuri Fiedin. Um, it is a style that focuses on trying to be efficient and minimal with using energy and uses centripetal uh, motions to generate the energy to throw the knife. One of the goals of the Skampf style is to not need to change your grip, not need to change your uh, throwing style, not need to change your motions. The only thing that changes is the distance, but you can use the exact same method to stick the knife into the target. So that's one of the goals. Uh, of course, the other goal is trying to be efficient and minimal. So you're trying to make things very compact and uh, as useful of the energy that you have as possible. If you want to add more power, then you have that power. You're not learning to uh, overuse that power ahead of time and hit a cap too soon. So. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to know is the grip. Unlike most other no-spin styles where they grip the knife deep in the palm, we're going to grip the knife kind of sitting at the base of your thumb, right here. You notice it's very, very close to the tip. We're basically able to you know, rotate the knife as if it's another joint, like an elbow or wrist at this point right here. Okay, so that's the first thing. Your hand is generally closed. Nice relaxed grip, but just enough that the knife doesn't fall out. It's enough though, if you have a throwing force, the throwing force will pull the knife out of your hand. Okay, don't grip too hard, or if you want to grip hard, just make sure the amount of force you're using to throw the knife is equivalent to make sure it pulls the knife out of your hand. You'll have more power in the throw that way if you want to go for power. The finger. Other styles will utilize the finger to either brush the spine to minimize the rotation as it throws to keep it straight, or you will use it to propel the knife with a springing motion or flexing, hard flexing motion. You're actively pushing the knife to propel it forward. In the skunk style, the, the finger is actually dead. It's just there to stabilize the knife so that when you throw, it doesn't fall backwards out of grip, right? If there is any motion or pushing from the finger, it's natural elastic forces from the finger not liking to bend beyond its natural position. So it'll flex back. Right, or a flick back. We are gonna make use of that uh, passive push. We are not actively gonna try to push the knife. So keep that in mind. Relax grip, grip over here, right? Finger is just there to support. We are not pushing or controlling or trying to stiffen and force this, the, the slowdown of this rotation. It's just there, okay? The next part, connecting the elbow and the hips. This is now the arm section. I mentioned we don't, we don't actively push. We are passively pushing if there ever is, and it's a natural part. What we are actively doing is pulling the knife. Okay, we're gonna start to pull with the hips, which will pull the elbow, which will pull the wrist, which will pull the knife, okay? But for now, imagine if the elbow was stiffly locked to the hip. When you move the body, the arm follows stiffly, right? Now, in reality, there is gonna be some flex because I said we're pulling. So if I exaggerate this, it will look like this. There's that pull, right? But if, you, if you're efficient, it's gonna start looking very tight and it looks as if it's stiff together, but really you're pulling. So keep in mind, you are trying to pull from the elbow, starting with the hips. We're gonna use a catapult analogy here. You know when you have a catapult, you have the shaft, you have the cradle that holds the rock, and when you cut the string that pulls and, and shoots the object, it's gonna do this, right? Like pretty much this. Imagine you have something to stop the catapult that's not gonna stop the rock. It's gonna keep shooting forward. We're gonna do the same idea with the hip and the elbow. You turn and you stop the hip, right? It breaks the link from the elbow and propels the arm forward. You're just gonna guide it towards the target. Don't follow through and go like this, but rather go where you want it to go. So you're just guiding it, but you're not pushing anything, right? You're following with the flow, but you're guiding it and pulling the knife towards where you want it to go. Put that all together, and you should be able to maintain the same grip, the same motion, regardless of the distance, and you'll, you'll still throw the same no spin throw. Let's put that to the test. Starting with two meters, it's gonna look something like this. And we're gonna go ahead and move back to four meters, uh, just to show you the motion should not change. I think that's as far as the best as I can go with the lens. Oh, 
At all times, the knife is practically sticking straight. So as you can see, I have this on a tripod so I can't really bring it down, but you can pretty much see it is sticking straight and parallel to the board. And that's basically what we want. That is always consistently the same regardless of the distance. And I am doing nothing to change the pressure of my finger, uh, the release point or how I'm moving. It's all the same. So that's the goal. And there you go. So that's the no spin scum style. Uh, if you're interested in learning this method, I suggest you look for uh, one of the first generation students that I have been studying from. Uh, his name is Mikhail Meyev. I'll go ahead and link some of his information below. Just understand that it, there's a lot more to this than just this. Uh, he's taught me various methods of throwing that actually all build up to improve and come back to no spin and improve on it. It took a while to get to this level, six months to be precise so far but it's improving and there's still more techniques i'm learning right now i haven't even touched half spin yet and that's what i'm looking forward to the most of course there is going to be a price i want to give you that heads up up front but check with him if you're willing to pay if he can break it down into certain payments plans because uh, if it feels like it's too pricey he's willing to work with you just keep that in mind aside from that if there's uh anything else i'll go ahead and cover it in the future tutorials you all have a great day